Hello everyone, my name is Annie and I'm a health educator with Salt Lake County's Aging and Adult Services. And today's healthy hint for July is all about the importance of hydration. The average body is made up of 60% water. That means that every organ, tissue, and cell in the body contains some amount of water. Water is essential and helps regulate our body temperature. It lubricates our joints. It can cushion the brain and the spinal cord. It aids in the breakdown of foods and then carries that nutrients and oxygen to every part of the body. And then it helps remove unneeded and excess items out of the body. Because water is so vital, it doesn't take much for our bodies to recognize when there is insufficient amounts of water. When fluids in our bodies run low, we are in a state of dehydration. Effects of dehydration can be felt with as little as even 2% of a deficit. And depending on how dehydrated we are, these effects can be as mild as feeling the urge to drink, or it can be as serious as having you know, body systems shut down. Now, as we age, our risk for dehydration increases for two main reasons. First, our body's thirst indicator, that's that signal that tells us we're thirsty, it starts to decline. We just don't feel that urge to drink as much. And second, it's easy to disregard some of these symptoms of dehydration as being related to something else. We may think that it's just a normal part of aging to feel fatigued or have muscle cramps or, you know, that little irritability, confusion, or we may associate those symptoms as part of a medical condition we have or the medications we're taking. And all of that may be true, but it also is true that these are reasons for potential dehydration. And that just makes it all the harder for us to recognize when we're not getting enough water. So knowing that this is the case, we need to be proactive and make sure we're getting the water our bodies need. So how much water is that exactly? Well, it kind of depends. For healthy individuals, the average daily amount of water needed is about 15 and a half cups for men and 11 and a half cups for women. Now, that is a lot of water. And on top of that, there are certain things that can change the amount we need based on our individual circumstances. Like how active are we? How hot is it outside or inside where we're at? What is our health conditions? You know, all of those variables can affect the amount of water that we individually need. So there's no real one size fits all answer and you really should check with your doctor about what is the right amount of water for you. So if we can't really rely on internal cues to remind us to drink, it's important that we find external cues. Examples of what an external cue might be for hydration, it can be as simple as tracking how much we're drinking. Many water bottles will have a metric label down the side that can help us keep track. You can also choose to um, use your daily routines as a reminder. For example, have a drink of water when you first wake up. Have a drink with every meal and snack that you have. Make sure you take a glass of water with you when you're, drink when you're taking your medications in the morning. Another cue we can use is simply to carry water with us throughout the day. Make sure that we have access to something to drink throughout the day, and then we can just take small sips throughout the day to stay hydrated. Finally, what we eat can also contribute to our overall water consumption. So if you recall that 11 to 15 cups, cups of water is an overall daily need it's not the amount we actually have to drink. So when we choose meals and foods that are rich in water, like many fruits and vegetables and dairy products, all of these can count toward our hydration's needs too. So I hope today's hint has given you some ideas on how to improve your hydration habits. For, in, for more information about this topic, you can access these links in the show notes below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next month for another healthy